What's going on, guys, and welcome to episode 478 of Hashtag Ask GSM here today, Royal Rumble Week, January 25th, 2023. Hope you guys are doing well. I am Graham GSM Matthews. We are one day away from me leaving for Royal Rumble Weekend, three days away from the pay-per-view itself. I'll be heading out to San Antonio tomorrow. Friday, got media stuff going on. Saturday, media stuff going on. The Royal Rumble that night. Might be going to the Taker one night, you know, stand-up show, whatever it's called. Not one night stand, I take that back. The stand-up show that he does. The one dead man show, whatever the fuck he calls it. I went to the first one over SummerSlam weekend with RJ in Nashville, and it was a great time. Alexis hasn't been yet. We'll be there together on Friday, most likely. Rumble Saturday, media stuff Friday as well. A uh, 2K23 playthrough, sneak peek playthrough, question mark, maybe, media only, Saturday. So, looking forward to all that stuff. I'll be flying back here on Monday. We'll be right back here for Hashtag next Wednesday, talking all about it and so much more. If you want to send in a question to the show, you can do so by tweeting me on the Twitter machine, at WrestleRant with the hashtag AskGSM. Find me on Facebook as well, facebook.com backslash graham.gsm.matthews. Drop a comment on the post I usually put up on Tuesday nights, if not on the wall itself. And last but certainly not least, drop your question down below in the comment section on this very video. And I'll be sure to include your comment and question in next week's edition. So let's get right into it. Micah does it from YouTube. Their first question was, What are your predictions for the final four for both the men's and women's Royal Rumble matches? So for him, for Micah, for the men's, he's got Austin Theory, Cody Rhodes, The Rock, and Seth Rollins as the final four in the men's. And then for the final four in the women's, he's got Naomi, Bailey, Rhea Ripley, and Beth Phoenix. Those are, honestly, I'm not sure I could do better than that. I think I discussed this with RJ last week on WrestleRant Radio. I honestly have no fucking clue. I'm awful with predicting Final Fours, and I honestly almost feel like it's pointless because I feel like last year's Final Four was like Bad Bunny, Brock, Shane, fucking like Dominic, or it was some like random Final Four. But I'll attempt, for the fun of it, why not? Um... Let's see, I do think Cody and Rollins will be in there together. I don't know if it'll come down to those two specifically, but I do think they'll be in the Final Four. I agree on Austin Theory. The thing with The Rock is that The Rock would have to win. I don't think The Rock's going to be in the match, honestly. I really don't. I think it'll come down to Theory, Rhodes, Rollins, and if I had to pick a wild card like pick, um, hmm... I think Bobby and Brock will eliminate each other um, if, if Brock's even there. He might not even be there. But I think to do the angle they did on Monday's Raw and then to not have Brock be on the show at all, then to just have Bobby be in the Rumble per usual would be a little weird. So at least those three, I do think Stone Cold could and will be in the match. That's the only explanation as to why he wasn't on the Raw 30 show on Monday. How the fuck do you have a Raw 30th anniversary show without Stone Cold Steve Austin? So, I do think he'll be in the match. I don't think he'd be in the Final Four, because he should not win. I saw the rumor from this past week, or the report, rather, from Fightful Select, the Austin Reigns rumors. I really do not want to see that match at WrestleMania. Um, I don't know. I'll go with those three that you mentioned. I'm cheating by stealing your three. And the fourth one, I mean, those are all Raw guys, so let's pick someone from SmackDown here. Let's go Gunther, maybe? Gunther, who else is in there? Strowman, maybe? I could see Strowman being in there again. Strowman and Rollins were the final two in 2019. So, let's let's go with the three that you mentioned, but take out The Rock and put in someone from SmackDown. Uh, maybe Drew? I'm thinking maybe Drew. I'll go Drew McIntyre. Drew, Cody, Seth, and Austin Theory. Drew was in the final two or final four last year. He got tossed up by Brock. So, I could see him being in the Final Four again as a former Royal Rumble winner. For the women's, you mentioned Naomi, Bailey, Rhea, and Beth. Um, hmm. Take out Naomi. I do think Naomi, there's a very good chance she'll be in the match. Gun to head, will she be in it or not? I'll say no. But I hope she is, and I think there's a very good chance she could be. I don't think she'll be in the Final Four, though. I think it comes down to... I think there's a good chance Beth is in the match. Rhea, Beth, Bailey, and Becky. I could see Raquel being in there, but I feel like if you're going to have Bailey in there, you kind of have to have Becky too, and Becky's one of the biggest stars in that entire division. So let's they, let's say those four. Raquel, I could see her having a good chance of winning. I really don't care to see her win. She's a fresh face. They're in Texas, which is where she's from. I'm not sure how many people would care, though. Liv Morgan, honestly, would be another good one. 
So let's say Bailey chucks out Becky, maybe, or Becky and Bailey eliminate themselves. Let's go Rhea, Beth, maybe Liv and Raquel, actually. Take out Becky and Bailey. I could see them being in the final four. Um, I'll go Liv starting out at number one. She lasts the entire time, loses, obviously. Maybe Raquel chucks her out. I don't know. But Raquel, Liv, Rhea, and Beth. Those are my final four for both the men's and women's rumbles. Um, his second question, what do you think Sami Zayn's final test will be? Roman did say during the trial of Sami Zayn on Monday's Raw, you know, you're not guilty for now. You still have one more test to pass come Saturday. And I think, like Alexis was thinking, oh, maybe it's the Rumble match. They never said he's in the Rumble. I feel like if Sami was in the Rumble, they would have announced him to be in the Rumble. I don't think he's in the Rumble. I think the final test is, to me, it's pretty clear, will he help Roman Reigns retain the championship? Or will he side with Kevin Owens and help him win the title? Um, I do think Roman retains, and Sammy maybe helps Roman, and Roman turns on him anyway. Uh, maybe he shows hesitation attacking Owens or whatever it might be. So I think that's what the final test is going to be. I do think the betrayal, either Sammy betraying the bloodline or um, Roman betraying Sammy, is coming imminently. We almost got it on Monday's Raw. I'm glad we didn't. That segment was phenomenal. One of the best segments I've seen in Raw's history, to be honest with you. Um, love the segment, love the storyline. I do think we either get the split on Saturday or soon after. So the final test will be as to whether he will align with Roman or Kevin Owens in the match on Saturday. Maybe Sami Zayn has made the special guest referee on Friday SmackDown because they still have one SmackDown to go. I don't know if Roman's on that show or not, but I know we're getting Kevin Owens versus Solo Sokawa, as well as Karrion Cross versus Rey Mysterio. So it's not as if it's a throwaway show by any means. Uh, Nike only also from YouTube, their question was, should Sami Zayn win the Rumble and Cody Rhodes win the Chamber for separate nights at WrestleMania against Roman Reigns? No, I mean, here's my thing. Sami and Roman could end up being the endgame. I've seen a lot of people say, oh, he's bigger than the tag titles. To me, the story is really with Owens and Sami. You don't get that story if Sami goes after the championship and he wins. I do want Sami and Roman, but I feel like to not do Sami and Roman at Elimination Chamber in Montreal fucking all in Montreal would be ridiculous. How do you not do that match in Sami Zayn's backyard? So, honestly, if anything, it would be reverse. Cody Rhodes would win the Rumble, and then Sami wins Elimination Chamber. I don't like the whole separate nights thing. I didn't like it when people were pitching it for The Rock and Cody. I don't like it with Sami and Cody. It should be one undisputed main event for the title at WrestleMania. This year, anyway. If you want to pull that shit another year, maybe, but... For this year, with Roman Reigns, I don't think he should have separate title matches. I know they're defending the Raw and SmackDown tag titles separately right now. We're so close to WrestleMania. Just have Roman defend the fucking belt as one unified belt, which is what he's doing at the Rumble anyway. So just have him do that, lose it to Cody Rhodes, and then from there you can do whatever you want. But I feel like, again, to do two separate builds for two different Roman matches at Mania, regardless of who it is, takes away from the other one. If The Rock were to come back and they were to do Rock and Cody on back-to-back -back nights, my personal opinion, maybe this wouldn't be the case, it would take away from Cody's road to WrestleMania. Who the fuck knows if Rock would even be on Raw or SmackDown to promote the match going into Mania, and they absolutely should. I honestly care less about the Rock and Roman match itself and the actual build to the match. If Rock's not there to promote it, then who gives a shit? He was on Raw leading up to WrestleMania 29. I mean, granted, he was the WWE Champion, but he was on Raw a fair amount of times to promote the match with Cena. It kind of sold itself anyway, but the build to me was better than anything we saw from the match itself at WrestleMania. But anyway, uh, no, I don't think Sammy should win the Rumble. I think that moment should belong to Cody. Oh, it's predictable. Well, fucking shit. They gave the moment to Batista and all these other people in years past. 2014 Batista, not 2005 Batista. When it was predictable. Who gives a fuck if it's predictable? At this point, they've given it to us when it was predictable, when it was a bad thing. Let's give it to us when it's a good thing, and that's what we want to see this time. We didn't want to see Roman and Batista win, you know, eight, nine years ago, when we got it anyway, and it was predictable. Give it to me when it actually matters, and it's someone that I want to see win. So, that's what I would like to see happen on Saturday. No L from Facebook, their first question was, Do you think Okada pulled off one of the best work shoot moments in wrestling over the weekend? I haven't seen the full video, I've just heard a lot of people talk about it, so I can't really answer that question accurately. Um, but it looked cool. Him going fucking off after he got kicked in the head was great. Um, that's the most aggressive I've seen Okada in a while. I don't watch New Japan regularly. I talk about that a lot you know, whenever you guys ask me New Japan questions, which is not a lot because, you know, I don't watch the show consistently. Um, 
but Okada, it's, it's really, his matches speak for themselves, but as a character from what I've seen, there really isn't much of a story there. He loses the title, he chases the title, he wins the title, he defends the title, loses the title, and then it starts all over again. Uh, doesn't really have had, he hasn't really had a ton of character development in recent years. He was doing that, like, not crazy character, but he was coming out with, like, the fucking balloon or whatever a few years ago. That was probably the last extent of what Kata was, uh, Okada was doing outside of character stuff, with character stuff. And now we're getting that a little bit with what we saw last weekend. So again, I haven't seen the full clip, but from what I understand, it was a great moment. i got to go back and check it out. And it does make Okada more interesting as the current IWGP heavyweight champion. I think it's him against the Wrestle 1 champion or Noah champion. I forgot what it was at an upcoming New Japan show. So I don't know if it's title for title. I don't think so. I think it's just champion versus champion. It does make that match a lot more intriguing than it would have been otherwise for a lot of people. Probably myself included if I go out of my way to watch the uh, Okada stuff that happened over the weekend. Their second question. Any last-minute Royal Rumble predictions for... You said for Sunday. It's on Saturday. I know it's confusing still. Uh, we've only had the Saturday pay-per-views for about a year now, consistently. But, you know, listen, I'm going to give my full predictions. We're doing an in-depth preview, myself and Mr. Marceau, on WrestleRant Radio tomorrow. The clips will either be up on the channel on Friday or Saturday, so keep an eye out for those. Um, I won't get into my full predictions now, but I mentioned it earlier. I think Cody should and will win the the men's Royal Rumble. For the women's, I think it should be Rhea Ripley. For the other matches, got to go out. I mean, those are the most important matches, but um, I do predict and discuss the other Rumble matches with Mr. Marceau on WrestleRant Radio first thing tomorrow. And they'll also be up in clip form as they usually are here on the channel. Not tomorrow, because tomorrow I'm dropping here on the channel my interview with Kofi Kingston, the video version of it. And the WrestleRant Radio excerpt should be up either on Friday or Saturday, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, Reborn Again at Reborn Again, John Ritland from the Twitter machine and on YouTube at Real Honesty with John Ritland. Love John. If you haven't already, go back and check out our video from two weeks ago, I believe, breaking down the best, the worst, and the most mediocre movies of 2021. Uh, or 2022, rather. It dropped two weeks ago, so go back and check it out. Great chat with John, as usual. His first question was, how loud do you expect the Alamo Dome to be for the Royal Rumble, considering there's upwards of 40,000 tickets sold? Um, it should be pretty loud. I mean, they were pretty loud for the past Rumbles of the Alamo Dome, whether that be... Wasn't the 07 Rumble in the Alamo Dome? I don't remember, but I think the 97 one was, 2017 was... This should be no different. Um, hopefully, I'll be there. So I'll be looking forward to hopefully participating in the loud crowd noise. People are usually pretty loud for the Rumble, unless it's a bad Rumble match. If it's a boring Rumble match, it may not be that loud. But, you know, listen, I think on Monday specifically, I really enjoyed Monday's 30th anniversary Raw episode. The crowd in Philly was not as loud as I thought they were going to be. They were loud for certain stuff, but... Not as loud or as rowdy as I was hoping for. So the WWE fans specifically got to pick up their shit. Not to say the product is white hot right now. They should they they should be a lot louder. I do think they should be louder than they are. The product I get at certain moments, there's not a lot to get excited about. But some of the reactions that some of the stuff has been getting lately, when they should be louder, are just not, for whatever reason. So that's disappointing. Hopefully, San Antonio, myself included, because I'll be there, uh, deliver with the show on Saturday and make it an electric environment and make the show as fun as possible. His second question, since it's Royal Rumble season, what are your three favorite Rumble matches ever? I still say the 90, 1992 one is the best ever. I agree with that. I've said that a lot before. Uh, the 92 Rumble, I think nothing is objective, but... To me, I think a lot of people would agree is still the best Royal Rumble match they've ever done. Uh, you said favorite, though. There is a difference, obviously, between favorite and best. Uh, the 92 was not in my favorite because I wasn't watching back in 92. Going back and watching it, it is a great match. And, but honestly, I can't even really say that because I wasn't watching wrestling when some of these other Rumbles have happened, and they were my favorite. Um, in the last couple of days, I've watched the 02 Royal Rumble match, the um, oh, our 2016 Royal Rumble match. That might be among my favorite. I'd have to think about it. That might be among my favorite. I'm not sure. Hmm. I'll go back and I'll go back to that in a second. But 2016, I loved. Uh, I've since also watched the 2010 Rumble and the 2005 Rumble. My top three favorite Rumbles would probably have to be... The 2021 was amazing. I love that one. That was one of the best that they've ever done. That one, the 2018 one, which was also a great overall rumble, and I was there for that one as well. 
So I know they're not too far apart, but I loved that rumble, the men's rumble specifically for both shows. And then the other one would either have to be probably 2010. Uh, like I said, I watched it last night. I have sentimental value towards that rumble because it was the first pay-per-view I ever ordered for WWE. Like with, you know, I, I think the first main pay-per-view that I ever watched um, that wasn't, I don't even think I watched the other pay-per-views like online or whatever. I just, I bought the 2010 Rumble. I wanted nothing else. I wanted nothing more around that Christmas than to buy that show. And my mom was gracious enough to get it for me. Uh, such a great pay-per-view, great match, Edge winning, coming back from injury, winning the whole thing was great. So probably those three. The 08 one comes really close, as does the 2016 Rumble. I still think the 2016 Rumble is great. Watching it back the other day, too many filler like entrants, like Mark Henry was in there for some reason, Titus O'Neil, who gives a shit, Jack Swagger, who gives a shit. Um, the R-Truth entrant was funny, but a lot of the other entrants in that match didn't really serve much of a purpose. But um, I always used to love my favorite Rumble of all time, usually, if you asked me five years ago, it would have been the 2011 Rumble. Watching it back, not as great as I remember it being at the time. The 40 entrance, I'm not a fan of. There was a lot of dead space in there, but still a good rumble. Um, but yeah, my top three are probably 2010, 2018, and 2020. All for the men's rumbles. And then uh, 08 also comes close. I wasn't watching wrestling at that point, but the 08 rumble is awesome. And MSG, Cena coming back, cool surprise entrance, crowd was electric, you know, Sean and Taker starting out. Great fucking rumble. So, um, top five in this order, 2020 would probably be my favorite. Either that or 2018. And I'd have to watch both back and make a distinction there. Probably 2018. But 2018, 2020, um, 2010. 2010 may not be my favorite number one anymore, but it's still in my top three. Because that was, again, sentimental value towards that one. Um, then 08, and then maybe 2016. And then all the other ones are, are good, too. I've enjoyed, you know, the early 2000 Rumbles. The 01 Rumble's a lot of fun. The 1992 Rumble, obviously a classic. Uh, 2011, I still enjoy to an extent, specifically for the returns of Booker T, Diesel. Love those moments. Um, 2012 was not great. 2013, I always liked. I liked the 2013 Rumble. Not a bad Rumble. Certainly better than 2014 and 2015, which sucked. Um, 2019 one was all right. 2017 was kind of boring, disappointing. Uh, 2021 was all right. Just it's in the Thunderdome, so it's kind of hard to go back and watch that one. And then last year, I fucking hated. These are all the men's rumbles. Some of the other women's rumbles were very good as well, but those are my favorites. Um, let's see. His third question here, non wrestling related, but have you seen any movies released this year so far? And if so, what ones did you like slash not like? Um, I have not seen many movies released so far this year. I've seen two movies in theaters, and then one show. Uh, Babylon did not come out this year. We discussed Babylon on our review, 2022 year in review and for movies and whatever. Uh, I had not yet seen it by that point. I saw The Whale late last year. Loved The Whale. Saw Babylon. Not a big fan. I thought it was good. Not must-see by any means. I did finally see Megan. Now, John, I know you fucking hated the movie. You thought it was trash. Uh, not that you're the only one that felt that way. I'm the majority, actually. I thought the movie was good. I enjoyed the movie more than I thought I would. The trailers made it look goofy as fuck. And I think because they kind of embraced that, I don't know, it wasn't as meme as I thought. Like, I thought it would be very meme-tastic, and they would kind of do a lot of dumb stuff, and it would be so bad it was good. It wasn't so bad it was good, it was just a genuinely good movie. I thought I enjoyed it. Uh, now they're making a sequel, I saw, so I enjoyed Megan. Um, I haven't seen any other movies come out this year. I have started to watch, I mentioned the one show I started watching, The Last of Us. I haven't tweeted about it yet, but I did start watching The Last of Us with Alexis. We are caught up, there's only two episodes, but... Uh, we watched both episodes, and they were very good. I haven't, that, honestly, that's coming from someone who didn't even play the games either. So I don't really know what's about to happen. Uh, but I like the show so far. I was never the biggest Walking Dead fan, so I'm willing to give this a shot, see it through, finish the show, and uh, we'll see where it goes from here. But uh, yeah, so far I'm liking what I'm seeing. Next question from at Ubagoo91. When do you think the bloodline will turn on Sami Zayn? Again, to go back to the question from earlier, I talked about this previously. I'm um, either on Saturday at the Rumble. I could see it happening as early as next Monday's Raw or next Friday's SmackDown because you got to start the build to, again, what I think they should do, Roman and Sammy one-on-one -on -one at Elimination Chamber, and that paves the way for Sammy and Owens to win the tag titles at WrestleMania. So I feel like you got to do the match, and if you do the match, 
can they still be buddies in the bloodline and do the match? I mean, I guess, but does Sammy win like a number? Like, that doesn't make much sense. So, um, no, I would, um, I would do the match there and I would do the turn. Again, I don't know if the bloodline turns on Sammy, like we said earlier. It might be Sammy defecting away from them. And I don't know if it's a ruse the whole time or if he was in on it with Owens the whole time or the last couple of months or the last couple of weeks. I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I just think he turns on the bloodline. And uh, maybe he thinks better of himself, and Owens has to kind of welcome him back into his good graces, whatever it might be. I'm not sure. But uh, it, it's got to be either... I mean, this isn't a, a very accurate answer, but I think it either happens Saturday, because I don't think they do it at the Rumble, and then it doesn't close the show. So, I mean, that can't be, you can't do an angle that big and then not close the show with it. So, it, it's got to either be on Raw or SmackDown. That, to me, feels like a great television segment. I'll say next Friday on SmackDown. I'll say that much. I'll do that uh, maybe on Raw, but Roman's a SmackDown guy, so I'll say SmackDown. Um, His next question, do you think Christopher Daniels should have been world champion in TNA slash Impact? Absolutely. The fact that he wasn't is a crime. Honestly, I'm glad we even got him as a world champion in Ring of Honor. Uh, I'm surprised slash glad we even got that in 2017. They did that whole ROH Originals tournament, and he beat Adam Cole in the finals to win the whole thing and become champion. Or he won the tournament and then went on to win the world title, the 15th anniversary show from Adam Cole. That was great. It had a good reign for as long as it lasted. Um, yeah, no, I've, I always thought he should have been a world champion in TNA. Honestly, anyone who was watching TNA back then, I wasn't watching from like 02 on. I started watching in 08. But I would have thought, yeah, he was a former TNA world champion because he was there for so long. He was so synonymous with TNA. He had his opportunities. There was just, I guess, never the right time or the right place or whatever. Didn't win it in that triple threat with AJ and Joe back in Unbreakable 05 or later on a couple of years later when he probably should have and uh, like 09 or whenever when they did the match again. Didn't win it in 2011 or 2012 when he was still there. He abso- For all the people that have held the TNA World Championship, and it's not like with the WWE title, oh, fucking Jinder and Jack Swagger had it, then of course Christopher Daniels could have had it. Um, the TNA lineage with that top title is pretty strong, to be honest. There's not a lot of people I would say, oh, they should have held the championship. Even someone like Tessa, who is obviously very problematic, at the time that she won it, was still one of the best in Impact at that point. Her in-ring ability was undeniable, which I think is her gimmick, or was her gimmick. So, Like, I can't even say, oh, because Tessa held it, Christopher Daniels should have held it. Like, at least she deserved it. They, they did the whole story with her beating Sammy Callahan. Sammy Callahan's great, I think, so I don't have an issue with him holding it, or Brian Cage, or Johnny Mundo, or Johnny Impact, whatever, John Morrison. Um, they haven't really had a lot of people that were like, oh, what a joke. I mean, I love Christopher Daniel. Should he have been, or uh, Chris Saban. Should he have been a world champion? Probably not. I would have rather seen Daniels as champion, but Saban's reign was like a fucking month anyway. I mean, he, he cashed in the Ultimate X, Destination X, uh, Option C shit, and he lost it a month later to Back to Bully Ray. I mean, by and large, they've had some pretty credible world champions in TNA. Uh, Daniels absolutely should have been one of them at one point or another. His third question, I read that WWE is considering reforming DIY. Would you want that? Um, I have not seen that at all, but I would want that, and I do think we will get it at some point. The Triple H is still running creative at some point, you know, whether it be a couple months from now, a year from now, whenever Ciampa comes back, we will absolutely get a DIY reunion. 100%. Whether, I don't know if it's going to be right when Ciampa comes back, but it will be at some point. Um, you can't pass up that opportunity. They're such a great team. We don't know how many years Ciampa has left. Get a great run out of them as a team, and then break off and have them do single stuff. Johnny should be doing single stuff right now. I know he's currently hurt, but they kind of eased on the brakes. They kind of, you know, eased on the brakes a little bit as far as the uh, singles push he was getting. They kind of stalled it as far as the Dexter Loomis stuff was concerned. When he, when he comes back, and it would be great to see him in the Rumble, I'm not sure he will be, but um, it would be great to see him in the Rumble. He should be a single star, but when DIY is ready to reunite, they should be doing that as well. They need more teams, and them against the Usos, the New Day, the Street Profits, um, the Viking Raiders, Imperium, Brawling Brutes, Alpha Academy would all be great matches. So hopefully it's not long before we get a DIY, DIY reunion in WWE on the main roster. Final question from Matt Noob underscore N underscore Co TV. The uh, last question of the day was from them. With only seven women having been announced for this year's Women's Royal Rumble, do you think the buildup has been very underwhelming? And will we see some surprise entrants at this year's Women's Rumble? 
Um, yes, the build has been underwhelming, not just for the women's rumble, but the men's rumble as well. I look at the men's rumble. They have a lot of star power in there by modern WWE standards. I do think it'll be a good match. My fear with the women's rumble, first of all, it has been very underwhelming. They don't really have a lot of people who could realistically win aside from maybe Rhea and she should win, but they've only announced seven women. I think two of those women are Zelina and Emma and I like Zelina and Emma, but the problem is that the major, I mean, Zelina gets good heat. But she's not an in-ring competitor. She's not going to fucking win. I like Emma, but the current WWE audience has been given zero reason to care about Emma. They have been given very little reason to care about Candice LeRae, Meechin, Nikki Cross, um, a lot of the women they've brought back, who are all very, very talented, Dakota Kai, Io Sky, but they get no heat. They get no fucking reaction. I feel like the in-ring portion of the match will be very good. How many people will care, though, is the question. I feel like there's a lot of women in WWE right now. They have a lot of very, very talented women. I love the women's division currently in both brands. Specifically, Raw, SmackDown needs help. They have the talent. The problem is that a lot of them, as far as characters go, aren't very interesting. I love Tegan Knox, but she's not very over because she's not on TV consistently enough. They haven't really given people a major reason to care about her. She hasn't had, like, a significant storyline. She feuded with Xia Li for, like, a couple weeks. Xia Li's not over either, so no one gives a shit, no one gave a shit about that. I feel like a lot of fans will be quiet for that match until, like, Lita comes out. If Lita were to come out, they'll come alive. And you can't rely on the legends to always get a pop for a match. So the build has been underwhelming. I hope the match exceeds my expectations with the women that might be in there. As far as the surprise entrance, absolutely. I think we need surprise entrance because I I'm going to be completely honest. I don't want to see them fill out the Rumble with people they already have on the roster. I mean, obviously, Zelina, Emma, you know, they make sense. Like, Scarlet being in there. I like Scarlet. She, does she need to be in the fucking ring at the Rumble? Or, like, Valhalla, Sarah Logan? Absolutely not. I would rather see them I would rather see them bring someone back from the past, not named Kelly Kelly, who we've already seen it a million fucking times, or... Um, you know, Alicia Fox for the third time, or the Bella Twins again. You know, I don't know how many female legends they haven't brought back yet that could be in the match. They brought back Victoria. They brought back Melina. Um, you know, Trish has already been in it. Could she return again? Maybe. Lita would be cool again, but again, she's already been in it twice. Uh, Mickey James has already been brought back once. I mean, her being back, you know, she's an impact right now. That would be cool. I'm trying to think of who else. Um, they brought back Jillian fucking Hall. Like, Tori Wilson's been in it a few times. Molly Holly. I mean, they've brought back so many women's legends. I don't know. I'm, I don't know how many more you can bring back. Ivory's been in it. So, there will be surprise entrance, but I would rather them put in people that have not been in before. I mean, listen, Eva Marie is not my favorite wrestler in the world, but her returning for a one-off just to get dumped, would on, I would honestly rather see that than Dana Brooke or Tamina. I don't give a fuck about Tamina or Dana Brooke. They're not going to get a reaction and no one cares. Eva Marie, she's not going to win either, but at least that would make for more of a moment than it, than Dana Brooke or Tamina being in there. Unless they're just going to get chucked immediately to add to the elimination count for someone else. Um, you know, Eva Marie came back a few years ago, but, you know, I could see her being back for a one-off. I could see... Um, Eve Torres, I, I don't know what the fuck her deal is. I love Eve Torres. She was always one of my favorite divas. AJ Lee's not coming back. I mean, she made that very clear with her injury. She can never come back to the ring, which is a shame, but it is what it is. I've seen people tweeting about that. I've always said that, but she has made it very clear in recent interviews. She cannot wrestle again. I am, I'm not even sure if she wants to, but, um, even if she wanted to, it sounds like she can't due to her neck or whatever. And that sucks. Um, you know, Paige would have been cool, but she's an AEW now. I don't think Sasha Banks shows up. Naomi, I could see being there. She'll be a surprise, I'm sure. Uh, Beth Phoenix, I'm sure, will be a surprise. She's been in a few times already, but that one at least makes sense because she can further her feud with Rhea Ripley. Um, Eve Torres, though. I mean, she has not wrestled a single match since she retired a decade ago. And first of all, she still looks great. And she didn't leave very old. I mean, she left very young at like 27, 28. Um, she's in like her late thirties now, I think, but it would be, I mean, she still keeps in great shape because she's married to a Gracie. So, um, it would be great to one of the Gracie brothers, I believe. So it'd be great to see her back for a one-off. I'm not sure how many other people could be brought back that we haven't already seen. Like Michelle McCool has been in a couple of times already. Layla would be nice. I'm not sure if she'd be interested in that though. Um, I'm not sure how many people would react or care. Um, What's her name? Brooke Tessmacher would be cool to see her back. She hasn't been brought back at all. 
she really improved in uh, TNA. I'm not sure how many people would care to see, like, Taryn Terrell in there. Awesome Kong is retired. I'm not really sure what the options are looking like as far as people that haven't been brought back yet. Candice Michelle would be great. I saw her say the other day, though, she hasn't been contacted, so she could be lying, of course, but Candice Michelle's been gone for long enough. I think she'd get a reaction, and she deserves it. Uh, listen, if they're bringing back fucking Jillian Hall, then I think Candice would be cool, honestly. I mean, could they bring back one of the Iconics? That's also a possibility. I could see, I mean, Peyton Royce is pregnant, but um, I could see Billy Kay or Jessica Kay, whatever her name is, being brought back for a spot. Um, I guess we'll see. And that's going to do it, guys, for today's edition of Hashtag AskGSM, episode 478 for January 25th, 2023. Thank you guys, as always, for sending in the questions. If you want to send in a question, you can do so by tweeting me on the Twitter machine at WrestleRant with the hashtag AskGSM. Find me on Facebook as well, facebook.com backslash grand.gsm.matthews. Drop a comment on the post I usually put up on Tuesday nights, if not on the wall itself. And last but certainly not least, drop your question down below in the comment section on this very video. I'll include your question in next week's edition. Uh, quick shout out, by the way, to everyone who signed up for a spot in this year's uh, 11th consecutive Royal Rumble game over on WrestleRant.com. It's the 11th year we've been doing it. I started doing it 10 years ago, but if you count 2013, which you have to because that was the inaugural installment, this is the 11th installment of the Royal Rumble game, which is fucking crazy. So um, all the spots went in like three and a half hours, which is cool. It's always like usually the night of all the spots are taken, which is great. So I appreciate all of you. Thank you for signing up. And whoever wins in each respective Rumble, you win a free T-shirt of whoever wins the Rumble. We have had uh, two-time winners before in the Royal Rumble game, at least one, maybe two. So I'm looking forward to uh, awarding the winner a T-shirt. You can either get a the T-shirt for whoever wins the Rumble, whoever you have at your number. For example, if Becky Lynch wins the Rumble, you win a Becky Lynch shirt. If fucking, you know... Uh, who knows? Rhea Ripley wins, you get a Rhea Ripley shirt. If Cody Rhodes wins, you get a Cody Rhodes shirt. If The Rock wins, you get a Rock shirt, so on and so forth. Or a Wrestle Rant Radio t-shirt. More likely than not, it's usually the wrestler shirts. But uh, um, yeah, be sure to support and all that other great stuff. I greatly appreciate it. And um, yeah, I look forward to heading to San Antonio tomorrow and talking all about the experience next week here on Hashtag and on Wrestle Rant Radio. Have an awesome one, guys. I'm Graham G.S. and Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.